So it's been a while, hasn't it? <laughs> hey guys, it's Nate from T-Drive. It's Nate from Team Trigon here. And uh, yeah, sorry we've been gone for so long, but uh, now we're back and we're ready to do learn more depth profiles and give you guys some uh, good content. So the first video that we're gonna be doing, obviously, um, I went to a tournament over the last week and I wanted to take something that I felt comfortable playing and that I really thought was gonna be a good choice. So people who know me know that I'm a very big fan of like um, Alistair and Friends, as uh, Slim likes to pronounce it. Um, but yeah, I'm a really big fan of the Invoked engine and uh, I didn't really have Dogmatica on me, so we just went with Numeron. Um, however, Numeron is a very, very interesting um, engine because you basically have to think about it as um, you can either stop your opponent's first turn with Zexel or you can only hear them on your second turn with obviously all the numbers. So it's very hard to keep that. Well, it's very interesting to see that you have two lines of play and you also have Mega Clops, which is just a broken card in itself. But yeah, um, I'm just gonna run you through the deck profile, show you all the choices that I made, um, probably going into side deck as well. And then yeah, uh, showing you obviously the results from the tournament and what I would change after that. So. Guy, if you wouldn't mind, please edit me into the next scene. Hello, and we are back again. So, this is basically just going to be me running through the entire deck list, uh, extra deck, and also possibly side deck. Um, yeah, definitely side deck. Um, and then we're just going to go through uh, what changes that were made, what the tournament progress was, and then work my way through there. So, of course, because this is an invoked list, we are playing three, Alistair the Invoker. I will never stop playing this card. I love, like, any invoked list that I see. <laughs> um, unless something really happens to this, um, to this engine, I don't think I'll ever cut it. I'll, I'll try and see if I can play this as much as I can. Most people know that I do really like this, this um, deck so well by that I mean any Alistair deck so yeah as long as I can play this guy it's uh, pretty cool you should know him by now you know add an invocation to hand can uh, use invocation to uh, fusion summon from the extra deck uh, fusion summon using your opponent's graveyard sorry so um, yeah nuts card next we play three Numeron wall now the reason why um, so this is basically like an, uh, a battle fader and then also searches out your uh, Numeron network, which I think is uh, pivotal. Um, it's basically just another way of um, you uh, get into your uh, Numeron combo faster and also allows you to basically um, cut out your any damage you take during a battle, um, which is pretty nuts. And then gives you a free body on board, which is um, pretty good. Um, that's mainly like the main monsters I'm running. You don't really have to run anything else. And then we just go onto the hand traps. So. I think there's 11 hand traps that I'm running. Um, it's pretty bog standard. So we go uh, three Ash Blossom, three Effect Veiler, three Ghost Ogre and Snow Rabbit. And then uh, contrast to what people may want to play in this deck, obviously, because of uh, you need no cards to, you must control no cards to activate um, Network or Wall and such. I play Tunibira. Now, the reason why not a lot of people might play this is because of the fact that it just gives you, it summons Sibiru, then gives your opponent a token, meaning that you can't do your Numeron play. But I would rather get rid of a problematic board on my opponent's side of the field than, you know, having to deal with a bunch of negates on my turn and then not being able to do, like, any of my um, stuff. So that's why I feel like that card is probably um, beneficial, and it did work out a few times. Uh, then we go on to the spells. Play three Numeron Network. The network basically allows you to search or send, sorry, a Numeron spell card from the deck to the grave, and then it becomes that card for the rest of the turn or gains that effect for the rest of the turn. And also, it does state that uh, Numeron XYZ monsters can activate their effects without detaching materials. That is amazing because that means you can basically activate your Numeron net, your Numeron numbers effects without paying the cost, and um, means that you get to your combo much more quicker and with. Uh, less hassle, uh, I like to say. Then we play two uh, Numeron Callings. I feel like playing three would be more problematic. Um, you don't really need it, and there are, and the space is definitely needed for other techs and other uh, cards that would be essential in the duel. So uh, yeah, two is enough. 
that's really it for the Numeron engine uh, in terms of spell cards. Then we play the Alistair engine, obviously we play the three Meltdown and the two um, Invocation. So, first of all, don't at me, I am getting another secret soon. Um, but you don't really need to play more than two Invocation, I feel like, with this deck. Um, again, I do feel like Invocation is somewhat what of a bricky card um, in certain aspects. Unless you're playing a deck that can really use it to its full potential, like Shadol's, I feel like two is enough if you're playing it as like a small engine. So yeah, this works out great um, in the matches. Then we just go on to a few tech cards. So we play three, Cosmic Cyclone. Um, just great for getting back row, and I feel like this is um, probably one of the best cards. And it also banishes the target, which um, if it's anything that's, um, you know, giving your opponent more advantage, then banishing the target is amazing. Um, then we go on to three, Call by the Grave. You really don't want your combo to be stopped um, or your Alistair to not get its search. So yeah, having three of these is essential for the stack. Next, we go on to a tech that I don't really know uh, why I didn't play three of this on the day. Uh, there's three, Foolish Burial, three, Foolish Burial, three, Foolish Burial. What? What the fuck? Uh, when I was doing the tournament, I was playing two Pathfinder, one for, uh, one, sorry, one Forbidden Chalice. Uh, not for this area, what I'm saying. Um, yeah, so we play um, three Chalice. Um, the reason why we play three Chalice, I was playing two Pathfinder, um, which worked great. Like, don't get me wrong, it's a really fun card. But there were times in the tournament where I feel like Chalice would have been the better option to have instead of, um, yeah, instead of Pathfinder, only because of the fact that it basically negates the effects of uh, opponent's monsters and going up against like play, uh, players who are using... An emancipator and such having that negate of an effect would be um more beneficial but yeah next we move on to the one ofs so one set rotation one terraforming one up start goblin now this card is a bit of a controversy again but I would, I would play one pot of avarice i didn't play this in the tournament but i would play this now um mainly because of the fact that you go through like so many monsters in your turn and if you're doing like the numeron combo and such uh and you run out of steam you're left in a pretty problematic state where you can't really go forward and even though you do your Alistair plays and such you only run you only have so much time before you basically like your opponent just like sees that you don't have that much advantage and then just kills you so using this gives you a little bit more time and then basically allows you to uh live for an extra few turns and then um last of all we play the traps which is three infinite impermanence if you're not playing impermanence um, I can't really say much else. It's basically like having another hand trap and uh, being able to negate your opponent's stuff is uh, great. And um, yeah, so that's pretty much it for the main deck. Uh, I think that rounds up to around about 41, 42 cards. Um, next, we go into the uh, extra deck. So uh, obviously for the invoked engine, we play two Mechaba and one Purgatrio. Um, I feel like this is the best options definitely purgatory for the otk and giving you more of an offensive choice definitely more of a second or third turn play only because of the fact that then you can just you know punch over your opponent and then it's uh yeah it's better and then mechaba for the negates obviously you know what this card does pretty broken um then we do the whole numeron play so we go to number one numeron gate um I'm not going to bother pronouncing that name because I'll butcher it. Two number twos. Um, yeah. Two number threes and one number four. Now, the reason why I chose uh, two of each for the first um, three numbers is because you do um, you do your sexual play. And then if you want to, you can do the uh, Numeron OTK, which is basically where, you know, you punch into one monster. Uh, most of you know the effects by now, but it can't be destroyed by battle. At the end of the damage step, when you battled an opponent's monster, you can touch the material, all your Numeron monsters gain um, double the attack. So you basically just keep punching until your last like two numbers are on like 4,000 or 8,000, and then you punch for game, which is great. Um, I am also, as like, possibly not the best choice, but I am running one C1, uh, just because of the fact that it just... Um, it's like a budget zero boros in the sense that you banish all the monsters on your opponent's side of the on yours and your opponent's field and then during your standby it comes back and deals damage equal to the amount of xyz's that were um banished on the effect so yeah it's just a way of uh dealing out some damage um then we go for 
obviously playing Zexil, this card is pretty fun. Um, does lose to, does lose to a, number, a lot more stuff than people think it does. Um, if you most decks are playing uh, Ghost Ogre now, and are playing um, like Infinite Impermanence and Forbidden Chalice and such. So yeah, um, not as broken as everyone thinks it is, but uh, definitely is a very fun card indeed. Um, next we play, uh, uh, obviously, uh, like the Brothers of Destruction, where you basically go into your first turn Mechaba. So you have Almirage and Secure Gardener, um, obviously bog standard if you're like, yeah, as I said before, wanting to make a first turn Mechaba. Then we play one Infinitrack uh, me uh, Mega Clops. Most decks can't out this unless they're playing um, Exceeds, because this is, or they have the out like Impermanence or uh, Forbidden, um, Forbidden Chalice, that kind of thing. But yeah, this card's really fun and often wins you more games than you think it does. Um, that's it for the extra. Not really much I would change there. Obviously, extra deck space is quite tight, so can't really um, fault it all that much. Then I'll just go into side deck very quickly and just explain it. Um, okay, so we have two Gamma Seals. I feel like uh, this is quite good for getting rid of problematic cards on your opponent's side of the field. Monsters, uh, monsters. <laughs> of course, Gamma Seal is monsters, but there are some monsters that are literally... I would rather have a Gamma Seal on the board and I can easily deal with that than like something that negates. Then we do play one Mystic Mine. Um, I know the card's like cancerous, but um, it does give you time to get your resources if you haven't really seen anything. Um, yeah, and then we go for the going second. We um, do play Dark Ruler No More. This would be Forbidden Droplets. Unfortunately, I am poor, so uh, can't really afford these. Um, can't really afford a Forbidden Droplets at this point, but yeah. Uh, Dark Ruler does a almost the exact same thing and uh yeah it's pretty um does pretty much uh give you more advantage um then we play two evenly matched this hardly came up but i feel like this is good if your opponent like overextends and doesn't really expect that you play it um then we play two dimensional barrier uh most people would not play this i feel like especially against like shadows and an emancipator when they um go into their synchro plays or um I'm trying to think of another deck now that relies on extra deck summons. Um, yeah, not really a lot that can... Um, but, like, if you play the Shadol matchup or anything like that, um, this is quite good because you basically lock them out of going into, like, fusions and such. So, yeah, I definitely feel like it's very um, underrated. Then we go for three Solemn Judgment. So the reason why we play so many, like, Floodgates with um, Dimensional Barrier and uh, Judgment is that this is mainly, like, a going second type deck. I feel like, or possibly, you can go first or second, but depending on your matchup, you may want to switch it out to a going first or a going second build, and that's why there's such a variety of cards here, just to make sure that you're able to like cope with whatever your opponent puts out. Then, this did buy me in. <laughs> this wasn't really the best choice, obviously, because of Rise of the Duelist only came out a few days beforehand, and um, knowing the people at my locals, I thought they would already have the cards by then, so I put these two cards in. For the Dogmatica matchup, obviously you know what Intis does when it's sent to the graveyard, it pops a card. And then uh, Nova, when it's sent to the grave, I believe, by opponent's card effect, you get a free Mechaba. Which I feel like is quite essential if you're doing like the mirror match against Dogmatica. Um, but no one was really there who was playing the deck, so unfortunately it was two wasted spaces. But yeah, I feel like that will be more prominent now, especially with like people playing more Dogmatica lists. And um, yeah, the deck's nuts. Uh, speaking of which... Uh, I just got this in the mail, so expect the new deck profile coming out soon, guys. Um, but yeah, match-wise for the tournament, uh, first round I played against Goki, won that. Um, second round I played against Anamantapaya. Unfortunately, um, he just saw too many of his combo pieces and I didn't really have a way to respond. Um, so there was that. And then there was Shadows at the end, and unfortunately... Um, a few misplays on my part, I feel like, but also it was just um, an overall stronger player and uh, could easily navigate my board. So, yeah, we ended up going X2, which um, obviously with the first locals back um, isn't too bad, but then, you you know, you, you want to basically go XO. Um, things that I would change with the list, I wouldn't really change that much. Obviously, the deck space is, like, really, really tight. So, I mean, if you want to play more Floodgates or you want to play more cards that will help you out with that situation. So, like more of the Solemn Brigade or something along those lines um, to basically help. But the main thing is that you play your deck how you want to play it. You, um, you basically accommodate for your strengths and weaknesses. 
and then play the deck how you should, how you feel like you want to play it. So yeah, that'll do it all for this um, deck profile, guys. Uh, be sure to like and subscribe. Make sure that you uh, keep updated with our content, and uh, we'll have more deck profiles coming out soon. Having a few of my mates uh, doing more of their profiles, some more meta-related stuff. And uh, yeah, this has been Nate from Team Trigon. Catch you later, guys. See ya.